this is Lance Wall now. Welcome to Firewall. This is our next episode, and uh, we are the Firewall. Our job is to somehow be the, uh, the clarifying place where all of the heated rhetoric of what's going on in the world around you can be arrested and we can get some perspective. I'm just reading today these articles, and you know, you must be hearing this stuff too, that as we're coming down to the wire with the election, this is the most consequential election in U.S. history, probably more consequential than even Lincoln's re-election in 1865 because in, in uh, well, that's no, probably just about as severe as that because if Lincoln had lost, you would have a split nation geographically. Right now, we've got a split nation uh, psychologically and that's not gonna go away after the election. As a matter of fact, the true election day nightmare scenario, that's the title of some New York Times articles and different people are commenting, and I'm sure you're already hearing about this, which is what happens in the election if um, Donald Trump has a, let's say, a, a uh, he gets a landslide in terms of, like he did last time, with the states he needs, you know, including like Arizona all the way through Texas and Florida and uh, New Hampshire and Wisconsin and Michigan, Pennsylvania. Then, of course, the scenario is you got mail-in ballots. Now, this is not any normal mail-in ballot situation. They're still counting mail-in ballots, by the way, in New York. And to this day, I don't know how they're going to do this because they couldn't even figure out. Remember the uh, Iowa caucus with the Democrats? They couldn't even figure out who won it. They couldn't figure out in Iowa who won, but they're going to figure out how 100 million ballots in the United States are going to. This is going to be such a crazy thing. So I want you guys to know that God himself is going to decide what happens. And I don't believe, here's another thing, because, you know, I'm in the prophetic community. And so you have people that uh, say, well, Lance, uh, you know, the Lord already said this. And, of course, they're all, they're all going off a of prophecy from somebody, you know, five years ago, eight years ago, who said Trump gets reelected. I'm going to tell you right now, there's no guarantees about what's going to happen until the church shows up, because all the chaos is happening is because of the church in the first place. That's my whole premise. That's the premise of my book. God's chaos code is coming out. You better get this. This explains why we have the chaos, and the chaos isn't because of the, the uh, virus that came out of China. That was an instrumentality of it. It isn't because of the George Floyd, George Floyd riots or the post-Floyd riots that are going on. It's because the church is the steward of the spiritual atmosphere of the United States, and we aren't keeping, uh, we, aren't, we aren't a house for the nation. We're not stewarding what God gave us. We've retreated into a smaller sphere called church and ministry, and we've let the nation be invaded. So we're going to talk about all that because there's a bigger game going on. Of course, Christians in America are anxious about America, but honestly, we're a bit narcissistic. We, we're, it's always about us. And you know what the amazing thing is, Christians? Tell me if this isn't true. The moment that Christians start talking about things going sideways in the United States, the first thing they think is the rapture's coming. You know, that's, that's how narcissistic we are. We think the moment we have problems, God, Jesus is to come back and history has to stop. I got news for you. They didn't stop when Mao took over China. It didn't stop when Stalin took over the Soviet Union. It didn't stop. Uh, it, do, it doesn't stop because Christians in America are inconvenienced. So uh, what are we going to do about this election? I'm going to suggest you a strategy, and I believe this strategy is going to work, but I'm going to hold off on that for a second because... The bigger story is, how is the church stewarding history? And it's not just the United States, it's the whole world. Here's a good verse for you. I'm just looking at this right now. Psalm 22, it's a big Bible. I'd like to have, carry that around. Psalm 22, verse 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. When is God the governor of the nations? I got my globe over here. I wanted to put a globe on the desk today. When is God the governor of the nations? All the way back in the Old Testament, he was the governor of the nations. His hand was already on what was going on, empires rising and falling. God determined what happened. He predicted exactly the duration of Babylonian captivity, 70 years. He predicted, uh, the prophets predicted the rise of uh, the Greek empire and the termination of the Greek empire and how it was going to break up into four empires. The Bible's amazing. This book it's so incredible. Any honest skeptic who looks at just the prophetic aspect of the Bible would have to be smitten with the realization that this book was either written by an extraterrestrial, some, far, some, some alien culture, or it was written by God himself because the predictions in it are so detailed, even including what's happening now. So uh, 
God's the governor of the nations, and then Jesus comes along hundreds of years after, uh, 700 years after the psalmist writes this, and Jesus says, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. When is it going to be given? For some reason, we always think Jesus is going to be able to straighten things out when he comes back. When he comes back. I don't know why we're always thinking about when he comes back. He says all power has been given. If it's already been given, then uh, why does he have to have all the power when he gets back? He's already got it. I'll tell you what the problem is. We have more faith for the Antichrist than we have for Jesus Christ to impact nations. That's the problem. That's why we're not impacting the United States. But that's going to get fixed. It's going to get fixed because Christians in America are a great resource once they're clear on what's going on. The kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. Let's take a look now at the world. I'm going to go back to the map back here. And we're going to examine what's happening in the whole world because God's doing something that is worldwide. It's all over the place. This is going to be my pointer today. I like this. I hardly ever get to use it. You ready for this one? I've got to go this way. I love this. As One America. I got this for one of my meetings we did at the Trump Hotel. It's great. You know what? The church, when it goes as one, when it's in unity, America's going to go with it. Let's take a look at what's happening. The contest here is going to affect the whole world, but first we have to look at what's happening in the whole world. Because the, uh, the Lord is a governor among the what? The nations, not just the United States. It's the whole world. So uh, let's begin. Where are we going to begin? We'll begin with, good, we'll go to Europe. That's a good place to start. For those of you that are confused, this is the map of Europe. And uh, let's begin over here. In Europe right now, this whole group over here, do you know that the aggregate economic power of the EU is uh, greater than the United States, I think, if you combine it all together as one. But uh, because it's separate nations, the economies are all like divided up. But the, but the entity of the European Union is a very mischievous thing we have to pay attention to. All of the end time prophecy people, the Hal Lindsey's and those people, they always talk about uh, the prophecy about the, um, the Antichrist is going to be, uh, is going to be coming from the, 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 uh, the, the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was seen as the, as the prince that will come is going to be coming out of the last empire. The last empire that uh, showed up was the Roman Empire. And so there's always, I mean, I've always thought that was kind of like uh, iffy. But when I discovered that the European Union actually is capable of being the global arbitrator for all economies, and I found out something from my economic source, my secret sources that I've got, that uh, the Davos uh, group, but don't go there yet, the Davos group, which is the largest corporations in the world. And this is interesting because 70 companies are larger than, the, than uh, I'd say it's 70 out of 100 nations that are the top economies. 70 of the entities out of all the nations that are larger than the countries in terms of like the total economic power is corporations. We're living in an unusual day. When, when Amazon or, or um, you know, uh, let's say uh, Facebook or Apple has a larger economy than Spain or Australia or, or uh, Ireland or something like that. So it's a, it's a very interesting thing. These nations, when they come together, if you put the corporations with the nations, you have a behemoth potentially developing, and that's exactly what they want to do. They want to be able to wrap up the, uh, the, they want to take over the global economy. This isn't like sci-fi stuff. This is just economic talk. Because in the post-COVID world, all the countries are upside down globally in terms of economics because everything got shut down. So every country is in a desperate situation right now. And so they're looking for an economic global reset. The United States, 27 some trillion dollars. I mean, we're just uh, Pelosi and these people are printing out dollars, dollars, a trillion here, a trillion there, like, like it's just like monopoly money. The fact of the matter is, at this moment in time, the whole globe is waiting for the election result of the United States to determine what these guys are going to do. It's going to determine what happens with a great global economic reset. And at that moment, everything changes. And it's not that far away. We're talking three months to six months. Oh, boy. That's why you want to pay attention to this program. We're one of the few people telling you these things. And we'll be right back. 
as a pandemic wreaks havoc and angry mobs burn our cities. Lance Will now explains why this is happening and takes you into the ancient text he describes as God's Chaos Code. This is the exciting sequel to Lance's best-selling book, God's Chaos Candidate, where he predicted Donald Trump would be president. God's Chaos Code predicts this exact moment in history and what is coming next. When you're in the midst of shaking and uncertainty, the one thing that can give you confidence is knowing what God has said about the time that you're in. If the Lord tells you ahead of time what's gonna happen, you can be certain things are gonna be working out. The Lord has given us that code in the Bible. He's told us what's coming in America, what's coming to the nations. He's literally given us the chaos code. We can understand what's happening and be awakened in the midst of it. You need to understand and get this chaos code. You need to know the code. Pre-order God's Chaos Code now at GodsChaosCode.com. Welcome back to Firewall. All right, so here we go. What's happening over here in the EU? Well, let's go to the next slide. The World Economic Forum. This entity here represents Davos. Davos is the club, which is going to be those corporations combined with those businesses, uh, combined with these nations. So you got a business nation, transnational integration, they have a vision for resetting a global economy. And by the way, this is the Soros crowd and all those guys. They want to be able to knock the United States out of the loop in terms of controlling the uh, economy of the world with the dollar. They want to be able to reset the global currency and control the global currencies uh, through the European Union with Davos uh, as, the, as the location in Switzerland where they all meet to have their World Economic Forum. This is kind of like the end time stuff that people should be paying attention to. All right, let's go to the next uh, picture. We got China showing up. China, now China, Donald Trump knows this. China is only $11 trillion. It's huge, it's growing, it's massive. It's got a billion person market. Everybody wants to get in, but nobody trusts China. They don't trust China because China sends out a virus and everybody gets shut down and then China denies they sent it. And then when we find out they sent it, uh, we find out that, uh, that, uh, that we can't prove it because they destroyed all the evidence. Meanwhile, they've got one thousand corporations all over the nations embedded in these countries because this is this is the integration the worst case scenario a nation that is a capitalist nation with a communist dictatorship running it so that every business is being run by this guy oh boy it's an amazing situation they would like to be able to take their and we've got prophets always prophesying china's the next world power china's the next as though that's not a bad thing that's a terrible thing because as long as they're going to be dick this is like the mob this is like the mafia running the globe all right let's go to the next picture this guy what's with his hair that's what i want to find out right now this guy's hair, every picture we got of him it's like this hair looks like el nino ran through it all right so this is uh, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, however, is the big disruption for everything happening in the EU. And I'm so happy for this. Why? Because there's so much Christian history in the UK. The UK is like totally off the skids. They, they've gone, to, I know America's competing with them right now for being nutty. But in the UK, you've got the Wycliffs, you've got the Wesleys, you've got the Whitfields, you had the soil of the martyrs, the reformers, you had the great reformation. And, uh, and, and so this man with this hair is creating problems right now for the European Union. You know why? Because he's taking out England, Great Britain, from the economic order. Now, right now, at this moment, in this moment in time, the European Union, they're kind of like having a problem because they're economically, they don't have it together. You know why they don't have it together? Because they don't have control. They don't have a central bank that controls all those states. They want to have a central bank. That's why they want to use this COVID crisis to restructure so they could take over. And then they're going to bring China in over here, and they're going to be like the 500-pound gorilla controlling the world economy. But this guy messed it up. You know why he messed it up? Because people voted him in because they didn't like what was happening with Islamic integration and immigration. Let's talk about that for a second. This is a subject most people don't like to talk about. Polite people don't discuss these things. But I think as Christians, you ought to understand something that these nations in Europe are open to anyone living there so long as they can assimilate into the culture. The problem with uh, the Muslim uh, uh, faith, the Islamic faith, is it's not assimilatable. It goes into a culture, but it doesn't necessarily easily become part of the culture for a simple reason. It's not a religion. Jews. Jews could be in Europe, they could be in Hungary, they could be in Poland, they could be in, in Russia until people try to kill them and they're killing them and they, that's why they went to Israel because everybody's trying to kill them. Up until then, they fit anywhere. You know why? It's a religion. 
But when you have a political ideology wrapped in a religion, that's Islam. See, it's basically a political ideology. That's why it doesn't go into a country and just flow, because it's got an agenda in its faith to take over. Uh, Boris Johnson gets this massive vote. Nobody knew it was coming. It's going to be like the Trump vote. People, you know, people are polling all over. Even you're watching television, you're seeing rioters and, and like Black Lives Matter or Antifa and these, uh, and these protests, and, and they're going up to people on a sidewalk and they're eating and they're drinking and they're getting assaulted and they're being forced to have to do slogans and, and say things and they're being, and they're being uh, intimidated and bullied. You know, when people are looking at that, obviously, that's, uh, that's a horrifying prospect. So when you're being called and people say, who are you going to vote for? You think people are telling people who they're voting for? They, there's nobody telling people who they're voting for. This is what happened in this place. In the UK, they're doing polls. Is it going to be Brexit? Is it going to be birth? They actually thought he was going to lose. What happened? Boom, a landslide. You know what? People didn't tell people what they were thinking. So anyway, Boris Johnson is on his way out, but he can't get out because of the virus. The virus interrupted the Brexit exit. And so he's like stuck. This is the stuff that's going on in the world right now. He could exit. Now listen to me. This is an amazing thing. If he can make the exit and Donald Trump can survive the chaos of all the flood of fake ballots that's coming in, blue state governors are right now sending 10 million, 10 million envelopes to their state citizens. You know why? In each of those blue states, because they're trying to encourage people to do the ballots because the ballots is an easy way they could alter the election. Trump could get a landslide with the Electoral College and then all overnight. Boom, wait a second. Oh, Michigan votes are coming in. Here's another box of votes. Oh, we found something over here in the trunk. Wait, someone's closet. We found some hundred, thousands of votes. Then gradually what you're going to watch is this big reversal happening, which is Trump's going to be losing because all these votes are coming in through ballots. I don't have to tell you what's going to happen. Trump's not going to accept it. And this is the insidious thing I found out. I was trying to figure out why does Soros... And these guys, why do they fund so aggressively? The Secretary of State, the office holder of the person in government under the governor, who uh, these roles like district attorneys and Secretary of State are key roles. We're finding out why. We're finding out now. You see all these lockdowns, and like you see these people are trying to defend themselves. And, uh, and, and then the, the, the district attorneys are actually the people that become adversarial. They determine who's criminalized, who's, who's a criminal and who's not, who's going to be prosecuted. And they prosecute so frequently if they're on the left, they're prosecuting the, the victim of a crime. But then it's the Secretary of State. That's the thing that fascinates me. They're the ones that verify the election results. Then I realized these guys are playing chess so far ahead because they know that if they can buy that office and they can get the right person in office, they're going to verify the election exactly the way that the left wants it verified. That's what's, that's what's there. All right, back to Boris over here. He gets the Brexit vote. He can't get out because they have, they're not in an economic position to push for a hard Brexit and exit. But what I was saying is, if he can do that, and if the American election uh, can, can see its way through, and that's going to be part of our church strategy, how we pray, then the, uh, the aftermath of that will be trade, will be done by, get this, Great Britain can do trade on their own. See, right now, no individual nation is going to be able to do the trade. They're doing it as the EU. He can exit and do trade on his own. What will happen is you're going to see a flood of money that's going to come into a Trump administration and a Boris Johnson uh, administration. This guy here and Trump can actually reset their own nation's economies with global investment and block the EU and the Davos and the World Economic Forum crowd from their insidious plot to reset and control the global economy, they could do that if he can get out. And he can get out if Trump gets in and stays in. It's a lot going on here. All right, let's go to the next uh, picture here. I want you to see this. Why am I bringing up this guy? Well, because there's another problem the EU has. And that's, this is Andrzej Duda. Andrzej Duda is the president of Poland. Now, you probably don't know much about Poland, and you're not even thinking about Poland, but you should be thinking about Poland, because it's the first state in the EU where Christianity has taken over such a dominant role that the president of the nation dedicated the whole country to Jesus. Did you hear about that? I didn't hear about that. He dedicated the nation to Jesus, and he's dedicating it to uh, Christian values. And for that reason, he's saying 
They want to be able to control what's coming in in terms of immigration. They want to have control over laws. They don't want to necessarily have same-sex marriage. They don't want to have to be ridden over by the steamroller of progressive American mar cultural Marxism changing the culture. They want to be able to recover their historic foundations as a Christian nation. They were oppressed under the control and the tyranny of the Soviet Union uh, up until like it was the uh, 1980s when they were able to break free. They're a fairly new nation, but this is what I talk about when I talk about sheep nations rising. They're in Europe. Hungary's the same situation with Viktor Orban. They don't want to leave the EU. They think the EU could be a good deal, but they don't want to have their identity, their sovereignty, their patriotism for their country or their Christian culture obliterated by the EU's values. See how this is working? They're two years ahead of the United States, because I want you to think about this. We've got sanctuary cities. You know what the left has done? They said, well, we don't agree with the federal government. We're going to have this state. I don't care what the federal government says. In this city, it's a sanctuary. Well, who's to say that you can't have the balkanizing of America, where you've got parts of the country which say, well, we're a sanctuary where we don't want to have abortion. Or we're a sanctuary where you say, <laughs> you know, you're trying to take away gun rights, but we're a sanctuary city where we're not going to let you take away our right to protect ourselves. You see how this works? That's what happens when you have lawlessness. It destroys the whole fabric of, of society. This guy is actually saying we're drawing a line. We're not going to get assimilated into this global empire movement that's taking place. Hungary, Viktor Orban, same way. Boris Johnson, he's saying, I want out. I want to be independent. See, sheep nations are nations that will not let themselves have their culture uh, uh, atomized by either leftist cultural values or by immigration that destroys their culture. That's a very important point. I'm glad I made it. Now let's go to the Middle East. This is where Trump, President Trump just got nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. I feel so happy for him because he gets deprived of every recognition for everything he's ever done. And the amazing things he's done. And he gets no credit for it because the left can find it. And then if he does something right, nobody even hears about it. Yet the Nobel Peace Prize, he's, he's been nominated for it because he's done something that Clinton couldn't do. Clinton, remember, he's got Yasser, uh, you know, Yasser Arafat over here. He's got uh, you know, the prime minister of Israel over here. <clears throat> and he's constantly trying to broker a deal, broker a deal, broker a deal. He never got a deal together. Donald Trump put it together. You know why? Because over here, the UAE, uh, the United Arab Emirates, and the um, and Israel, and I'm going to tell you something else, Saudi Arabia, these countries understand that their biggest enemy is actually Iran, not Israel. Israel just wants to exist. Iran wants to take over. I talked to some uh, Israel high officials. And they gave a, de a briefing to uh, some people. I was in Israel. And, you know, they were being very, you know, discussing the military situation. They've got Hezbollah over here. They've got Hamas over here. They're surrounded by terrorist organizations. But I said, what do you think of Donald Trump? Oh, the smile. And then when we, the interview was over, I pulled him aside. I said, what do you think about him and his decision to, take, to deal with Soleimani? Soleimani was the mastermind of the entire terror network that was funded. I'm sorry to say, what do you think? $100 billion from President Obama over there to Iran, instead of it actually uh, uh, securing peace, it helped to fortify their own uh, networks. Do you remember what was going on in Iraq? What was happening in Iraq? We had the uh, embassy was under siege. Do you remember that? And what, what was happening was Soleimani had orchestrated, along with a general in Iraq, for the dismantling of this. Well, now this unfortunately, this is what I am sorry to say, without Donald Trump, this will be the kind of treatment America will get globally. They start burning down our embassy, and what does Trump do? It's amazing. He says, I couldn't do a strike on him in his own country. There's international laws for that. But if he's over here, and if he's involved with the embassy uh, fires and attack on American uh, servicemen, he gave the go-ahead to take him out. They took out the biggest terrorists, the, the Israeli uh, officers. They said it was the most courageous, incredible, shocking development they've ever seen in foreign diplomacy from a president, because he dealt with a, a terrorist leader who was untouchable. Boom, took him out. And what happens is the Saudis, the UAE, um, Oman, the, uh, Egypt, uh, Jordan, they actually are worried about Iran and keep your eye on Turkey. We don't even talk about Turkey. Erdogan, the president of Turkey, has had long ambitions 
to be the head of a caliphate. You know what a caliphate is? It's when the uh, it's the era of the uh, Ottoman Empire when the Tur when the when the Turks and uh, had a Muslim caliphate of all these states, all like a united, uh, like an EU of Muslim nations, and that's the dream that he's got. Then you've got Iran over here, which hates death to America, death to America. And so, these, so what Trump has done is he's opened a pathway for these guys to align with Israel because they recognize that their threat is in Israel. Their threat is other guys. It's an amazing game changer. How long will it last? As long as you've got a guy like Trump around, you have the motivation. Nobody, everybody knows nobody's going to go to war with Trump. So his backing of uh, Israel is so strong that they can line up with Israel. This is an amazing piece of history, people. Everything comes down to what happens here. And what is our strategy going to be for this? The church itself is going to have to insert itself in a most powerful way, almost like in the book of Esther, when the Jews saw the destruction of the Jewish people was going to happen under Haman, who was going to purge the entire Jewish community. It would have been bigger than the Nazi Holocaust. And they went into fasting and prayer. And Esther went to her husband, who was the king, and she made the appeal for their protection. And the situation was reversed. As we go into the, uh, the final days of this election, the church itself is going to have to enter into a place, kind of like the people of God with Esther, that are going to besiege Almighty God, that the American experiment doesn't, doesn't collapse, that we're able to see our way through, because if he can stay in position, that global order from Davos to China to the Middle East is adjusted. That's an awful lot of information to be taking in at one time. I know that. But if this man can survive this battle, if the church gets behind him and prays the way we have to, we're going to find out that uh, the plans that the corporations and the EU and Davos and China, the plans that uh, Iran and Turkey have, that all that the devil wants to do will be disrupted because God's people are going to stand as one. We're going to be talking about this in the next couple of weeks. You want to pay attention to the broadcast. Share this with your friends because we have to increase our knowledge of the times and what God is doing. I look forward to seeing you again on the next broadcast. God bless you. Lance Wall now has just released his latest book, God's Chaos Code. You need to know the code. You need to know what's happening right now. There is a code in the chaos. There's a purpose in the shaking. Once you see this, it's going to give stability and strength to you. God is literally raising up an awakening generation right now. It's hidden in the code. You need to know the code. Pre-order God's Chaos Code now at GodsChaosCode.com. On next week's episode of Firewall with Lance Wallnow. The end game of the Lord is going to be about the sheep nations or the sovereign nations, and it's going to be a the raising up of nations as Jesus' inheritance, there is a harvest coming in. And the harvest is going to be a harvest of souls, and I believe it's going to be the move of God in nations. Thank you for watching today's episode of Firewall with Lance Wallnow. For more information, visit lancewallnow.com.